Hello and welcome again. In this video, we'll talk about the definition of the trapdoor one-way function. Now, uh, it is important you already know the definition of one-way function before we actually talk about this one. Uh, if you haven't seen the previous videos about one-way functions, I recommend that you actually go ahead and watch uh, all of the other videos. So let's go ahead and define what the one-way function is, uh, trapdoor. So it's, it's just a function, usual function from A to B. We're going to say that that function here is a, a trapdoor one-way function if two things happen. Uh, the first thing that has to happen, of course, is that the function itself is a one-way function. And remember, the, re, uh, the definition is that the uh, inverse uh, is not computationally uh, feasible. But when it's a trapdoor one-way function is given some extra information called the trapdoor information it becomes feasible to find for uh, any given value in the image y I can find x so that f of x is equal to y um, that's uh, let me just draw a picture here so let's say I have a one-way function here so going from here to here is computationally easy but going backwards uh, here is computationally hard for almost all of the values here. Now, uh, going backwards here, when we have a trapdoor, it means that if I have some extra information, then I will be able to go back uh, uh, easily. Now, of course, that extra information, uh, if you are using this function for encryption, you should keep this extra information uh, secret. Uh, so that's the point. The point is that the back door uh, or the trap door uh, should be secret in cases where you are using the function for for encryption. So that's basically the trap door. Trap door is just a way to invert the function if you know uh, some extra information about the function besides the definition of the function, besides whether the function is how the function is defined. So let me give you an example here of the. Uh, uh, one uh, trapdoor one-way function now this example i'm going to give you is an example we talked about i think it was in part three of this sequence of videos of one-way functions and this was the an rsa function which is a one-way function a strong candidate for one-way function i should say so let's recall a little bit of the information from that example so i have my number n which is uh, this large number that you see here which is actually the product of two large primes uh, the set A is this set from 1 to n minus 1 when this is my n. And my function is the function that takes inputs in this collection and gives me outputs in exactly the same collection. And it's defined like this. It's defined f of x. The mathematical formula is just x cubed modulo n to this particular exponent here. Now, let's recall uh, something that we were trying to do in, that vi in one of the videos. In one of the videos, we had this problem. We wanted to find x for which x cubed modulo n is equal to y. So basically what I'm trying to do here is I know my y. Let me go back here to the, I know my y. I want to know what x came from because remember this going here is x cubed modulo n. I want to know if this is given, I want to know what it, what it came from. So that's basically what we want here. So And this is actually, we tried to do this and we said that that was a hard problem in the sense of, in the following sense. Uh, that was a hard problem. And remember what, the way kind of like I show some evidence that that was hard is I let Mathematica try to solve uh, this for X, where this is my Y. And remember it took more than four hours and it didn't give me any answer. Now, this function that I have here, X cubed modulo N with this setup, uh, it's a trap door. It has a trap door, which is this. And the problem is going to become easy when we have the trap door. In this case, in this particular case of the RSA function, this IR function, or any other RSA function, the trap door or any RSA function is the factorization of the number n. So that's why it's important that you choose p and q to be large so the factorization of m n is hard so people don't know the trap door. Otherwise, of course, uh, decrypting becomes easy. So what is a trapdoor here and how does this help me uh, recuperate in here my number x that is here, which is basically the 
plain text and this will be the cipher text if we are using the RSA encryption. All right, so when we have an uh, P and Q, there is a way to compute the private key for the R uh, for the RSA, which is denoted by D. And that private key, if you remember the setup for the RSA, D times the public exponent is congruent to one modulo the Euler function of n. Now, in our case, the public exponent is just the number three because the function is x cubed modulo n. So this equation just becomes 3d congruent to 1 modulo phi of n. Now, because I know the factorization of n, I can compute easily phi of n. So phi of n is p minus 1, q minus 1, which can be computed easily if I know the trapdoor information, which is the numbers p and q. So basically all of this is if somebody comes with a way of computing f of n, from n, when n, uh, n is equal to p times q, then this will be bad for RSA encryption. So nobody has been able to do that yet efficiently, so that's why we still use it. So I'm going to do this in Mathematica because it's a little bit easier. So Mathematica is going to compute uh, for me this d, which is basically just solving this modular equation, and it gives me this uh, uh, huge uh, public, uh, sorry, uh, this is a private exponent, and it takes this many seconds, which is, of course, a very short time. Now, how do I solve my problem? Now, to compute x, we only just have to do this. We just do this. Uh, we take y, which is in the image. We take it to the d power, which is this d, which you just computed. Because uh, we knew p and q, we were able to solve this modular equation really easily. And then this is modulo n. Now, this is not a hard problem because this is just this, basically the square and multiply algorithm. Even though the numbers y and d are large, this will not take too much time. And in fact, Mathematica computes this very easily and we get this number. So this is going to be my x. And we compute it in 0, 0 0.004099 seconds, which is very uh, fast. Now, remember that this kind of computation when I didn't know the factorization of the number n uh, was really hard for Mathematica to do. Of course, that's not a proof that the function is a one-way function. It's just evidence that it, some kind of evidence that it is. So in this case, the RS function is a trapdoor function because I can have an extra information, a trapdoor, that allows me to compute the inverse of some elements um, easily computationally easily. So that's that's just one way. This is just an example. The Rabin function, the one we talked about last time, uh, which is has to do with the quadratic residues, that is also a trapdoor one-way function. Uh, I'm not going to show you an example of that. The only reason I was talking about this um, this here is just to give you an idea of the uh, trapdoor one-way function, and this is one of the examples. That's probably a very important example here, this RSA. Uh, so that's basically all I have to say about one-way functions. So I'm, I'm going to finish the sequence of one-way function videos here. Uh, and the next video, we'll talk about some other interesting uh, mathematical things that we will use later for this class. So I will see you in the next video.